Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Data Dialogues. Today, we're talking about data warehouse automation with a focus on Data Vault with Alexis Desai and Brian Thomas from Wearscape. Wearscape specialise in helping IT organisations of all sizes leverage automation to design, develop and deploy data infrastructure faster. Both Alexis and Brian are highly experienced solution architects at Wearscape, so they're the perfect people to talk about the benefits of automating a data warehouse. Hey, Brian and Alexis, thanks for joining today. Brian, could you tell us about yourself? So my name is Brian Thomas, and I'm a solutions architect for Wearscape, but probably it's more important that I'm a 20-year Oracle DBA, and I've been building data warehouses since the 1990s, so... Um, I'm excited to be here. Great. Thank you. And Alexis? Hi. So I'm Alexis Desai. I am also a solution architect with Wearscape. And I've been doing data management probably for about 20 years in data warehouse implementations for maybe the past 15 years. So um, a lot of experience with implementing data warehouses from scratch as well as you know using automation tools. Great. Thanks for both joining today. Obviously, well, Wearscape and Certus have a very uh, strong uh, partnership. Um, Certus is a reseller for Wearscape in this region. And obviously, we've developed the Iris platform, which is a, a packaged data vault solution that, that really runs on top of uh, the, the core value props of, of Wearscape. And, uh, and obviously, Wearscape's a big part of that. Um, so we wanted to have a bit of a chat today, I think, about um, data vault automation or or warehouse automation, specifically around uh, data vaults. Um, I was talking to Gartner earlier in the year to, to some of their analysts at the, the Gartner conference that we have in this region. Um, and an interesting kind of tidbit of information that, that they shared with me was when they're talking to their customers and doing their advice, that if someone's saying they want to do a data vault, they tend to tell them that if they don't invest in automation, that they're likely to probably move away from Data Vault in 21 months. And they've, they've tracked it to that, that very specific number. Um, and I think uh, it kind of points out that, you know, that automation is really critical to getting the value out of the Data Vault methodology and, and uh, seeing those benefits for agility um, and extensibility that, uh, that people talk about. So, Brian, can you maybe um, talk to us about automation? Why is it important in the context of warehouses? What does it what does it do? What does it help deliver? Sure, sure. So, one of the things is that, as he brought up, it, it's not just data vault, but all data warehouse projects fail at a large rate. Sometimes I've seen things as high as fifty percent; they just fail. So. Automation to me keeps you in the game longer. So we will go through when I, I'm showing a demonstration of our, our Wearscape Red, our, our, our core flagship product, and I will build a, a very simple hub and spoke model or a star schema and, and really show how that automation can happen in the space of an hour. I can build out what, as I said, I, I've been doing data warehousing since the since the 90s. And the first data warehouse I was on, we built just a simple star schema using a product like MicroStrategies. And that took us six months to build out the entire data warehouse. And I, I do that every day when I do a demonstration in about an hour. That's the power of automation when it comes to data warehousing. And one of the things is that each each time you make a change with with a data warehouse the traditional way without using data vault you have to go back and test everything even if you don't make a a change but you have to test the whole process that's one of the things that excited me about data vault is that because you you basically tack on something new you add a new hub a new link a new satellite you're not changing your entire data warehouse so the automation process for that um, speeds up the development of it and then the cost of it is a, becomes a lot lower because of that um, because you don't have to keep adding on and incremental changes have incremental costs with with data vault you really are just paying for your one little change you're not paying to retest everything as part of your your automation as well so 
Good question. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think it's it's really important. Um, so, Alexis, um, can you talk to us a little bit about where Wearscape came to focus on data automation and and the relationship with Data Vault, in particular, automating Data Vaults? So, uh, you know, Wearscape is a company that um, started with it was an in-house consulting company. So they developed the tool really to help their internal customers to be able to deliver quicker in the New Zealand market. And they went to market with their warehouse automation tool. And Dan Linstead, who's the founder of the Data Vault methodology, was very impressed by what he saw in this automation tool. So in 2016, he partnered with Wearscape to develop data vault automation. And so he's been very, very involved in how we develop the tool and how we continue to develop the tool, you know, and make progress in it. And all the, it's very standardized. We follow all of the best practices. And Dan is very involved in making sure that, you know, it is up to his data vault 2.0 standard. So um, that is how we, you know, are, and we continue to work with him, which is great because that allows us to not only implement as he grows his product and makes changes to his methodology, we also do that. So you're always getting the latest standards and best practices. Yeah, that's, I, I know Dan uh, puts a lot of effort into continuing to evolve the standards and it, it's great that you guys have that relationship with him to continue to make sure that, that the Wearscape automation capabilities uh, meet the current standards. You know, we've seen that in action. So that's really, that's really cool. Um, so Brian, what, what are the key advantages that a customer gets out of uh, using automation with Wearscape? Well, that's a, that's a great question. So, you know, we have two products. We have one that's called Red, which is your development platform. And you use that to actually build your hubs, links, and spokes, build your staging tables, even go as far as, as building your, your star schemas and your business vault. All of that is built in red. But we also have a product called 3D, and that's really where the key advantage for it. So you use red and you automate the process, but 3D is the design tool that then you can take and you start off with your design. You start off with your source, and you go to your, your hubs, links, and satellites, and then we have automation built in so that you can easily click a button and create the load tables, the stage tables, even your, um, your pits and bridges and things after the fact. That's where the automation comes in. We're automating even the automation process. So that's where I, I see the key advantage to automation with Wearscape is uh, we can we can assist you with that. We it is also easily um, easy to progress through your development platforms. You go from development to test to production. You click a few buttons and and you can take your code and deploy it to your uh, your user acceptance test platform, and it's already automated the uh, the loading of that platform for you. So that's that's really where I see our key advantages for our software is. Yeah, and there's obviously huge financial benefit from uh, not having a huge team of ETL developers sitting there coding, uh, coding and making code that they're going to probably change, uh, you know, within a month or two. And, and, uh, and so that process, I mean, we've seen also when customers have a demand for some new information quickly, uh, with automation, you can run, you know, we've run sprints in a day where we've actually loaded, you know, additional data sources into the vault and had a prototype report before the end of the day. And, and you couldn't do that without automation, clearly. Um, so how, Alexis, how broad uh, can automation stretch? You know, what's possible uh, at the moment and, and maybe what's coming? So, you know, when you talk about automation, um, you know, as Brian mentioned, we have two separate tools. We have RED and then uh, we have 3D. So with 3D, you know, you're able to go in and discover your data. So discover your source. You're able to profile your data, set different metrics that maybe you want to profile. So this allows, you know, your 
analyst, your developers to go in, look at the data, you're able to show this to your business users and kind of prototype on the fly versus, you know, going back and forth in emails and having to kind of nail down your requirements. So you're really able to get through the whole life cycle of the data warehouse much quicker. Um, Right now, you know, we're able to connect to the source, we're able to build load tables, stage tables. And when you think about that, you're talking about all of the metadata columns that go into Data Vault, um, creating your hash keys, your change keys, all of these things that if you were doing manually, you know, it's very prone to error because it is very detail oriented. And then you're also developing, you know, hand coding all of this. So with automation, it's gonna save you that whole, you know, time frame of doing that manually. Um, but, you know, currently we're able to load and take that all the load all the way through the entire data warehouse life cycle, all the way recently to being able to build pits and bridges, as Brian mentioned. So it's really the entire data warehouse life cycle. It allows, you know, your business user to connect anybody that has a connection to the data warehouse can query it and get the information that they want out of our tool. So that's because great. we don't. Yeah, I was maybe just going to mention just for anyone that's new to the Data Vault Alliance community listening to this, a pit and a bridge is a point in timetable and a bridge table, which are both parts of the Data Vault um, methodology that help you speed up that consumption end. So where you actually get to the reporting and, uh, and helps you uh, manage joins and queries and all those sorts of things to speed up. Uh, that end, which has traditionally been a challenge for for Data Vault. So until those two uh, those two changes came along to the methodology. Um, so Brian, maybe um, question for you: Do you have any specific tips or tricks um, that you'd like to share? What kind of uh, pitfalls um, that people can avoid? Well, the main one of the main things to think about when you're automating your data warehouse is. It's, it's more about automating the process. You are automating the creation of the warehouse. But this is what I found over my, my years of, of doing data warehouses and just doing development, period. You spend a lot more time on your application after it's been deployed. A lot more money, a lot more time. And so the real trick is using an automation tool like Wearscape so that you can find the code quickly to make a change mm -hmm. and that everything is is GUI based so that you can you can really um, just click a few buttons and type as little as possible. When I was doing data warehouse development, I more often than not had to correct my own typos. That was my main bugs. It wasn't that I didn't code properly, it's that I would have a typo. And so using using our tools, as opposed to we are very flexible and open, you can actually take any code you want and cut and paste it into our application at certain points. And technically it's automated, but when you do that, you lose the ability to go in and make your modifications later. So that's one of my main one of my main tips that I tell people is if you can do it through the tool, do it through the tool as opposed to like a join. We have it real easy that you can click on some buttons and say, this is how I join those two tables. And if we don't have it, we have the flexibility to take uh, templates and stuff like that to help with the automation of the creation of your data vault that create that. So that's that's one of the the tips and tricks and and I I I, I really believe that our tool cuts down on the amount of coding you do, which contributes to to the success of projects. So one more thing is is the business vault. Now I think Alexis brought it up. We talked about pits and bridges. That's one of the true tips and tricks we have. So Wearscape has now automated that process. So when you run into issues with your data vault not performing like you need it to, you yeah. can use these, these pits, point and timetables, bridge views um, that give you that speed up your access to your data. That's, that's one of the biggest tips that I can give you is use the business vault. Yeah, yeah. And look, I know that uh, Wearscape's really strong with documenting what you've done as well. Your self uh, self documenting kind of capability within Wearscape is very impressive. And when we when we went through the process of building Iris, um, 
you know, we've we've plugged Wearscape with uh, with a governance tool, and and I think we really uh, were able to leverage the fact that with automation you get consistent development and mm -hmm. you don't get those errors flow through. So the the quality of the metadata is a lot better into the governance tool, and so you can do you know source to target lineage, and it works with you know with a with a data catalog and a business glossary and those sorts of things as well. Um, and the quality of the metadata is is really uh, reflective of the quality of the warehouse. Um, so, um, Alexa, for you, um, uh, maybe uh, what's the best way to get started with uh, with automation and Wearscape? So I think, you know, the first step is um, requesting a demo. So Wearscape will give, a, a, you know, your organization a demo of what our tools can do. Um, we have a demo specifically for Data Vault Express, which will show you our 3D tool in combination with RED and show you, you know, how you can facilitate, how you can use that really to accelerate your development of your Data Vault. Um, and then there's also, we will, do, you know, we come out and we will do a POC, or I should say nowadays, since we're um, in a kind of a different time frame um, with some different things going on with COVID, uh, we proof of concepts with our customers with their data and show them, you know, really what we can do for them using their own data in their own infrastructure. So it gives you kind of a um, way to see how this can work within your environment, just, you know, outside of a demo where we're using, you know, sample data or that type of thing. So I think that, you know, that's a useful thing. And we also have, you know, great training. So we have Wearscape University where, you know, people can take classes and see, you know, how to use the tool. And it does provide, you know, quite a bit of knowledge in terms of how to utilize the tool and kind of get you started. And then, you know, we also have professional services that, you know, you can call upon to come in and help you get set up with using the tool. But really, you know, the tools are very intuitive in, in their own and they have the ability, you know, you can go into the tools and start using them without a whole lot of help, you, especially if, you know, you've taken the Wearscape University classes. Um, most people find it very easy to be able to use the tool. I mean, I've been working with Wearscape now. I joined, I think, in March of this year. And, you know, in the last couple of months, I feel like, you know, I can do quite a bit with the tool and am able to really show how to develop your warehouse, your data vault, as well as a standard, you know, warehouse with your facts and dimensions. So I would say, you know, just getting in touch with your sales rep and getting a demo is probably the best way to get started. Yeah, and look, I'd, I'd mention we're actually doing a, a pilot right now for a customer in this region, uh, completely remote because of COVID. Um, mm -hmm. And and it's great, it's their data. Um, yeah, we're remote connecting into the the Wearscape that's uh, been deployed into their into their environment for the for the the pilot. Um, so we're playing with their data, helping them show how Data Vault and Wearscape are going to solve their problem. So um, it's definitely possible. Look, thank you so much for both uh, joining today. I know it's it's late where you are and early where I am, but I appreciate uh, having you both on the line for this conversation. It's really good to hear about you know how uh, automation can help um, customers looking at Data Vault and also all the all the advances that that Wearscape's made. So I really appreciate your time. Thanks today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening. If you'd like to access additional resources on today's topic, be notified when new episodes of Data Dialogues go live and access valuable information management resources and news, head over to certasolutions.com forward slash data dialogues or follow the link in the description. I hope you'll join me on the next episode.